Introduction Inventions occupy a very important place in the evolution of human civilization. It is on the basis of inventions alone that mankind has evolved with every step forward. Be it the wheel or a telephone, each event and the resulting product associated with has given to us some kind of an advantage that has helped us in moving every step forward in this realm of limitless evolution. Indeed, there is no limit to the evolutionary process, just as there will be no limit to the invention-making process as well. Considering that, which is also a realistic fact, inventions still keep happening as we speak, walk and even sleep. Some of the most robust inventions happening today aren't even disclosed, most of the time because of their confidentiality or simply because of a lack of appropriate space on a newspaper or tabloid. This, however, doesn't mean that people will get stripped of their right to become aware of all the technological advancements taking place around them. Indeed, the history of inventions is a history of civilization as well, and a subject of debate and intrigue. In fact, inventions have helped us to write the past as it should be, since without these commodities, the past is impossible. And hence, the simple conclusion follows that the world human presently live in is actually a product of inventions that have led us to our present standpoint. There never were smartphones in the 1800s, but all that changed when two individuals came out with a device that could allow two people to talk to each other regardless of the distance between them. The history of evolution is thus a history of inventions, on one sense, that has been discussed briefly below. In this compilation of the greatest inventions, ten of the most revolutionary phenomena have been presented with a brief history and understanding of how these changed human life in their own terms. These inventions are, however, purely a chosen list and might not fully suffice with the opinions of all readers who might have their own considerations regarding the greatest inventions ever. Nevertheless, certain inventions have left a permanent imprint on human society and history, and those have been presented in the text. This small compilation is intended to be read by everyone, and will certainly help students of history and enthusiasts looking to get a single document of inventions without browsing pages of the Internet. This text will try fulfilling that objective as best as it could. Chapter 1. The Wheel In the history of inventions, there is little doubt that the oldest and perhaps one of the most valuable inventions invented till date is the good old wheel, round and perfect in shape, that has helped mankind travel to every corner of the planet without fatigue or discomfort. Indeed, the wheel was one of the most revolutionary inventions of its time, still used today in every automobile and moving object, and is now also helping humans to traverse the red sands of the planet Mars, and will of course aid in traversing yet unknown landscapes of our galaxies and universe. It was never, until 3500 BC, that the first true wheel was invented in the dry sands of the Mesopotamian deserts. That was a true wheel, in that it was round and spherical in shape, but altogether an extremely heavy object and difficult to maintain. The real historical date of existence of wheels is much older, however, with the first round objects used to carry heavy objects being in existence in the Paleolithic era, 15,000 years and later. Back then, humans used to lay large logs for carrying equipment and objects forward with crossbars to check any slippage. This was the simplest and the most primitive way to carry things forward, but lacked the ability to carry humans forward to long distances. And hence, it would take several more millennia to invent the round-shaped wheel that we see today. Approximately 14,000 years later, the wheel was developed and attached to a cart driven by a bovine animal. This wheel would allow any human to travel as well as carry any amount of baggage required to several miles and kilometres without the discomfort of using the erstwhile heavy wooden logs. There was a catch, however. The wooden carved wheel was still too heavy and difficult to maintain in whatever circumstances offered to it. 
including wet weather conditions that made the wheels soggy and prone to braking conditions. This was to evolve further with the introduction of the spoked wheel that standardised its design for the next millennia till modern day. Starting from 3200 BC, an additional 1500 years would be taken for the wheel to become more streamlined, lighter and more adept at harsher conditions with survivability for most terrain forms. Around 2000 BC, the Egyptians were one of the first to use spoked wooden wheels for their chariots and carts and to give these means of travelling higher sturdiness and adaptability for the terrains that Egypt offered to the people. The spoked wheel design proved to be very revolutionary and established itself as a solid means of transport, both for civil as well as for military purposes. Such was the utility of the spoked wheel that several notable Egyptian pharaohs used it as a decisive military advantage over rivals and political foes who did not yet absorb this technology. The spoked wheel design was also so standard that it would establish itself as the permanent layout for any wheel for the next 3,000 years all the way to modern date. Indeed, the design of the wheel has remained pretty much the same in form, figure and the principles behind it rolling for these last 3,000 years starting from the introduction of spokes by Egyptian engineers. The spoked wheel structure would be carried onwards to the European landscape as well, when Celtic chariots would be the first to use metallic spokes instead of wooden on the chariots, dated around 1000 BC. These metallic spoked wheels would remain permanent design till the 1850s when wheel structure started evolving again. In 1802, G. F. Bauer registered a patent allowing for the construction of the first wire tension spoke. In 1845, R. Wee Thompson would make the first pneumatic tyre, replaced by John Dunlop's design in 1888. The Dunlop brand still exists. Technically, modern-day wheels are still the same spoked wheels, but with a modified structure. Starting from 1885, Carl Benz would patent the first motor wagon to use bicycle-type wheels topped with tyres for a smooth ride. Hence, the spoked wheel got reinforced by a rubber-made tyre that would give it balance and support. In the decades to come, and as the automobile industry developed, wheels became thicker and flatter to allow for more friction between the tyres and the surface beneath since automobiles would become powerful day by day. The present design hasn't changed much, at least since the 1900s, when several wheel brands were also established. In terms of the legacy left behind the wheel, then it can be said, without doubt, that the world moves with the help of it. A world without wheels and automobiles is plain impossible and unimaginable. Every month, the tyre industry contributes several millions of dollars to the global economy. And as the demand for cars and wheelers increase, this will only increase at a rapid pace. The wheel thus provided mankind the power of traversing. Chapter 2 The Atlatl Human beings have existed because of their ability to survive in any condition thrown up to them and their powerful ability to adapt to any condition by developing certain traits that help them to cope up more with their surroundings and environment. One key trait that all humans have shared so far and our ancestors shared more as the reason behind their survivability was hunting. Back in the days of the Great Ice Age, there were no means of harvesting farms, let alone even grow one of them. Homo sapiens had just become more modern, but the path to an establishment agricultural society would take almost another 5,000 to 6,000 years before its onset. Till then, human societies were at a constant move and activity to survive the best they could. Since this was a question of preserving the whole human race, developing the aspect of acquiring and storing nutritious items was priority at the top of the list, and there was no compromise with that. Physically, humans have been evolved to hunt. Being group organisms, humans used to form hunting parties, lock on a faunal target and hunt it down like most other hunting species do. 
Male members were specifically required to fulfill the duty to bring back food for the family and kids. Biologically, the shoulder structure has been designed by nature to throw airborne objects that would hit and make a successful kill. The atolatl would aid in this hunting experience and allow for these humans to preserve themselves in these turbulent years and make what for new generations to populate the earth. However, hunting came with a bunch of costs and dangers of its own. Hunting events were mostly dangerous to all those participating and these were characterized by several members becoming lost or even losing their life to the powerful forces of nature. No wonder that not everyone survived but only those very few who were able to apply more wits and senses to the whole situation. Sometimes tribe members would permanently become handicapped after an event making them an additional burden rather an asset for the whole tribe. In these circumstances, the human ability to make things out of natural resources proved to be a powerful force. The atolatl was the first device that would aid humans in throwing spears towards a target far unreachable by usual throw of the hand. It was also the first leverage machine in that the energy of the arm would get transferred to a lever-like mechanism, get concentrated and would help a spear or a javelin to launch off with full force, helping the thrower to launch the weapon at unimaginable speeds and distances. The mechanism was so innovative at its time that it was undoubtedly the most advanced device for hunting purposes. The hunter would simply put a javelin or a spear on its resting part, aim for the target and by holding the leverage perform a throwing action by which the spear would dart off with great speed and force, enough to kill a soft target with ease and accuracy. Although it's unknown on the common specific targets the atlatl was used, the device was more than enough to hunt down species like deer or wild boars. The legacy of Atlatl too cannot be ignored. The device was the first to use a leverage mechanism to drive a missile forward. For thousands of years after its inception, the Atlatl would find use in more advanced purposes, specifically in military and on the battlefields. The device itself would go in for certain modifications, and some would even be used for ceremonial purposes. If ever one device boosted the survivability of mankind, then it was certainly the atlatl. Chapter 3 The Iron Nail Moving forward into the chronological order of human history, one would agree on the importance the iron nail has implied on human civilization. Surely, without the nail, human civilization would collapse and lay crumbled like a pile of dust. The first use of iron nails has been attested to the Roman times when several engineers, the empire, produced extensively moduled molten iron into pointed figures that would help wooden structures to stand the test of time. Since these were so strong to support large structures, engineers soon found more advanced purposes of them by constructing projects that had wooden skeletal structures supporting heavier, primary structures outside. The nails were so superb quality that they could withstand centuries of weather and heat without much damage to them and the structure they were supposed to support. In cases where these nails were mixed with alloys that prevented rusting, structures using them could stand for thousands of years, as has been the case of famous monuments built during Roman times. Quite a couple of them still stand today in perfect condition. The nail was also so important that it was brought to use more by common people than the aristocrats and emperors who built robust structures. Common Roman citizens would build apartments and homes with the help of nails instead of supporting wooden blocks together in a fashion that was both tedious and difficult to maintain. Nails were the supporting block for these structures as these allowed safety and insurance during times of earthquakes or calamities that could have otherwise destroyed streets after streets of wooden houses. The nail is also a device that has its shape unchanged for the last 2,000 years. Besides, only certain developments in metallurgy and alloy making, its core principle remains the same, to act as a hard support for the structure on which it's standing on. It also requires no glue and is more long-lasting. 
in the coming eras, nails became more developed. In the 1800s, mass production of steel from iron was possible, thanks to the efforts by Henry Bessemer. By 1886, iron nails that were more prone to rust and were less efficient than steel slowly waned to a mere 10% of usage in the United States during the same year. Even now, steel nails are the norm. A world without nails is also impossible, since they make nearly every construction seen everywhere. Nails are beneath and around us. They make our home safe and secure and defy the powerful forces of nature as best as they can. Although they are of utmost utility, caution needs to be observed during their usage as they can be very injurious and can inflict fatal punctures. Chapter 4 The Compass Discovering new lands and regions has always been a very human sport and a necessity for most. Early humans traversed the wild landscapes in search of suitable pastures and landscapes that offer them suitable climates that could support their existence and help in preserving further generations. Early human history is mostly the migration patterns observed by the individuals and setting up of semi-urban civilizations where it was thought to be the most fit. However, travelling was a dangerous activity back then where there was no guidance for anyone to refer to. Before the compass came into existence, travellers used to refer to stars and the direction of the sun as some of the guiding objects for their trip. These objects were, however, extremely arbitrary and never a very appropriate means of guidance. Referring them could mostly end up in losing track of a journey and in cases where full voyages were in place would mean extreme risk for the people participating in them. No wonder, then, that not much of the voyages at sea undertaken during the medieval ages were executed only when certain referral devices were at place. One of these devices was the map and its contemporary and primary tool, the compass. The modern-day compass is a device that is older than its officially attested date. The Chinese were the first to invent it and dates back to the 9th and 11th centuries when it was made of lodestone and had attractive properties of a magnet that Chinese scholars back then had been studying it for quite some time. This early compass was a successful experiment, but it was too heavy and bulky to be used for daily activities. The transportation of the idea of the compass took place when Europeans started getting more and more in contact with the then Chinese society. European sailors and travellers were not far from discovering this gadget and soon got passed on to the Arabs and several other mercantile societies. The very same compass that famous sailors like James Cook and Vasco da Gama used was a more refined, lighter and a more mobile version of the Chinese compass this time using only a simple round dial that could be held on the palm, with a pointer acting according to the magnetic field of the earth, pointing to the direction the individual was facing. This compass was to be default set at north-facing direction, thus providing the referrer a perfect reference of the direction he or she was heading towards. Indeed, if it wasn't for the ingenuity of the compass, no voyages could have taken place and no legendary sailors would have been made. Today, the compass is still used wherever travel is required. Its design and principles remain unchanged for the last five centuries and is literally a necessity if one wants to explore the wilderness where more modern devices like the GPS or satellite-guided images do not function. In such cases, the good old practice of keeping a map in the bag with a solid metallic compass can save more life rather than being guided by arbitrary senses and objects, the latter being prone to undesirable results. Planet Earth has been discovered on the basis of the compass map pair. During the Great Age of Discovery, sailors and merchants discovered magical lands of the Americas and some of the most remote areas of Southeast Asia on the basis of compass. With that said, credit needs to be given to the compass for a small device like it has contributed a fairly large part in developing human civilization further, without which even modern-day tracking systems like the GPS and geographical concepts would remain forever absent and sailors like James Cook simply wouldn't have existed. Chapter 5 
the printing press. Coming up in the next greatest invention during the medieval ages is the first printing press invented by German printer Johannes Gutenberg. It's quite a no-brainer and needs no explanation as to the importance of and the legacy left behind by the Gutenberg press. Before Gutenberg's invention, printing was literally done by hand. And as anybody can think of it, every book and text in the libraries and at one's home was purely handwritten. The idea of a printed book did not even exist, at least in the pre-medieval times when Gutenberg constructed the first mechanical press that would altogether change the concept of book writing. The first printing presses were made by the Chinese and Koreans, although they lacked the much-needed knots and bolts that would make book printing at an exponential rate. Presses made in these regions were more of manually operated entities that more or less functioned in the same manner as writing a handwritten book. At least the pace at which books could be printed remained pretty much the same as handwritten material. All this was to change with Gutenberg's press. His mechanical press had no prior knowledge of Chinese or Korean presses, although it had only certain similarities. Gutenberg's and the presses used in these eastern regions at least used the handmade moulds that helped create large metallic movable types. The only unique thing about Gutenberg's press was its mechanical process where the ink could be transferred from the movable parts to a piece of paper. This small yet revolutionary concept applied by Gutenberg changed the course of history forever and changed the world along with it. Within months of his successful construction of the first mechanical press, publication of books skyrocketed. With its inception in 1440, the number of books published in Europe by 1500 was incomparable. A staggering 20 million books were sold in Europe alone, beginning the adoption of the printing press by several shops and the establishment of large-scale printing presses. The printing press was also so important as it introduced literacy to everyone and anyone. Prior to these machines, being literate was primarily concerned with the wealthy and established families who thought of as education as one of the foremost activities of the members. During the Middle Ages, the existence of feudalism further created the divide between the haves and have-nots, the former comprising of noble aristocrats, knights and ruling families getting ample opportunities for educating their young members the latter hardly even getting enough finances to pursue literary activities. This was also in contrast to the erstwhile Roman times, when education was considered a way of civilised life, and education was more of a common good among the citizens across the empire rather than a monopolised commodity. All this, however, changed permanently with the coming of the press. Kids, teachers, theologians, parents... Families and nearly everyone could now easily access to any literature they wanted to refer to. The printing press revolutionised the world read and wrote. It also saved immeasurable minutes of theologians' times who used to devote considerable portions of their daily time writing biblical and other such stuff through means of calligraphy and specialised writing. Since these techniques were extremely time-consuming and required even more time to completely publish copies of one book, the printing press gave these hands a remarkable rest. Theologians and churches could simply print books by developing moulds in the calligraphic style and simply witness the flow of the ink through these moulds as one book after another printed in quick succession. Foremost, the printing press gave the Bible and the literature of faith to the masses that was so required since centuries. It was also the start of printing of magazines and newspapers that would further make way towards the development of media and journalism. Chapter 6 Gunpowder It can be hard to imagine gunpowder as one of the greatest inventions in history, but trying to analyse its effects will result in one realising that the gunpowder changed the course of human history just like the printing press, the wheel and the compass have done so far. The gunpowder can be thought of as one of the foremost inventions of the Middle Ages that helped mankind to enter the modern era. 
Although the purpose of gunpowder was too simple to be used on the fields of battle and usage in arms and ammunition, its implications were permanent, global and time-changing. It was first invented by Chinese alchemists sometime during the Middle Ages, approximately 9th century, but much before the introduction of it on European borders where it seems to have certainly been found an interest among European scholars and scientists around the 13th century. Several written texts by Roger Bacon and his contemporaries describe the mixture of it being comprised of salpatter, charcoal and sulphur. It still remains the same mixture today and has been assigned the UN number UN0027 with a hazard index of 1.1D, a flashpoint of 427 to 465 Celsius and a pH of 6.0 to 8.0, making it an acidic substance when dilute. The first use of gunpowder was also undertaken by Europeans and, to a considerable extent, in the Middle East, Central Asia and India. Scholars and scientists in Europe soon recognised its potential to dart off projectiles because of its booming property and hence started using it as an explosive for cannons and its first use in firearms. The implication of gunpowder changed the course of history. At just one stroke, armies could deploy tons of gunpowder equipment and wreak havoc on the enemy. Without this simple mixture, some of the notable regimes and civilizations would never have existed. The Hispanic colonial empire, the annexation of South American tribes under Spanish crown, the Mughal empire, and of course, the British, owe their imprint on history to gunpowder. Gunpowder was also a step that radicalised how warfare was conducted. Prior to its introduction, warfare was a costly affair and required in-depth knowledge of close-quarter manoeuvring and strategizing. With the coming of gunpowder, things changed altogether in that armies could now engage themselves over a distance, allowing for more room and freedom to execute complex manoeuvres and tactics. The gunpowder powers themselves came to rule more than half of the known world with the aid of none other than the compound just described and its superior ability to execute radical tactics. Chapter 7 Electricity A world without the electrical wire is a world dead and unknown. The revolution in sciences and the introduction of electricity to every home and office building revolutionised the way human society started living. Electricity also introduced hundreds and perhaps thousands of new innovations that are themselves regarded as some of the most important inventions in human history. These include devices such as the electric bulb, without which the world would still be living under oil lamps and flames. Indeed, electricity is one such phenomenon that powers the whole world. Cutting it off will shut human civilization forever. So dependent human civilization is on electricity that completely shutting off would mean putting mankind to the brink of extinction, since there would be no longer means to store and cook food, the one thing that makes humans and rest of the living world move around daily and fills it with life. In support of such a claim, one would realise that without electricity even food wouldn't exist and man would be forced to live a life once observed during the onset of the Ice Age when individuals had no other choice but to find shelter and food as means of self-reliant survival and livelihood. Electricity is also all over us, surrounding the houses, streets, shops and the everyday devices that are used every day. With the light bulb being already considered, other such inventions such as the telephone and the television that will be covered later in this text could never exist without the means to supply electricity. The phenomenon of electricity remained a topic of intellectual curiosity until the 1600s when European scientists, including William Gilbert, developed careful studies on electric charges and magnetism and made some of the earliest magnetic mechanisms. It was never until 1752 that Benjamin Franklin would actually witness firsthand how electricity looked like and that lightning from the skies was indeed electrical in nature. 
his famous experiment of finding a metallic key to the bottom of a kite flowing in a thunderous sky proved that electrical charges existed. The modern-day usage of electricity is the product of great efforts laid down by some of the most notable researchers and scientists of the 18th, 19th and 20th century. By the late 1800s, electricity was started to gain immense importance from being an area of scientific research to full-scaled electrical engineering. People like Michael Faraday, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Graham Bell, Nikola Tesla, Alessandro Volta and Thomas Edison are the founding fathers of what most call the Second Industrial Revolution that lay the groundwork for global electrification and establishment of electric power stations that would power whole nations. Chapter 8 The Telephone some of the most unique inventions that forever changed the lives of human beings were a result of accidental experiments. One such invention was the great telephone, still used today in just a more digital format. Without the telephone, modern-day commerce and global business could be imagined as near impossible. Telephone's legacy and credit goes all the way back to the 1800s when Alexander Graham Bell, was one of the first to be patented with a telegraphy project. He, along with his colleagues, started developing a device based upon their knowledge on electricity, called initially as the electrical speech machine. Bell's idea was that a device be existent that converts the voice of an individual into electric currents that are transferred through electrical wirings to the destination where it's converted again into voice signals, audible through the transponder. The concept of the telephone still remains the same, voice being converted into electrical signals being transferred to another individual's phone. The schematic diagram used by Bell as a reference for developing the first telephone still exists today as a preserved document in one of the American museums. So great was Bell's contribution that by 1922, when Bell died, the US telephony service shut for a minute to honour his death. The telephone was also a simple device in that it could be mass-produced and used by the masses. Following the telephone's success, whole lines of telephone wire was laid out and established as telephone centres acting as the hub for telephone users. Here, telephone users would instruct an operator to redirect a call to a named individual. During its early days, the telephone was mostly used by those serving in the government as a means of quick communication. The telephone proved to be an indispensable tool for the masses and business people. It globalised the way humans interacted with each other and made all the practices redundant. It was also more efficient than telegraph or sending letters over long distances. The telephone truly revolutionised modern society. Chapter 9 The Steam Engine If the wheel was the rolling principle behind every locomotive, the steam engine should be considered as one of the first to power these locomotives, without which humans would never have invented automobiles that are seen with every individual today. Mechanised machine working had been the topic of interest for several thinkers and scientists well before the 19th century, when the first steam-powered engine was constructed in England. The steam engine should also be considered as the father of the combustion engine, which powers modern-day automobiles. In fact, the principle behind the steam engine and a combustion engine is pretty much the same powering a component called the crankshaft through a means that releases powerful gases. In case of the steam engine, it's the high-pressure steam released by boiling water, concentrated by a mechanism that drives machines. While in the case of a combustion engine, a fuel, like diesel or petrol, is used to release hot gases that drive a typical automobile. The first steam engine was built way back in the 1600s, this engine was never really an engine, in its purest sense, but was actually constructed to power a water mill. The mechanics comprised of a piston joined with a mill that rode it. The force that moved the piston up and down was the steam released by high-pressure boiling of water. 
This principle becomes so widespread and so synonymous with the Industrial Revolution that it soon received a claim to be used in railways throughout those regions where rail networks were being laid out. Steam engines still exist today in several parts of Europe and Americas as a part of tourist attraction and research for those looking into the evolution of engines. Chapter 10 The Penicillin The story of penicillin is the story of the development of medical sciences in a short description. Without the invention of penicillin, a vast number of medicines would have remained unknown to this date. Invented in 1922, penicillin is considered by most to be the one of the first mass-produced medications that cured hundreds of bacterial infections in humans without any considerable side effects. It was also one of the first medicines to be used en masse in a commercial manner. Penicillin was invented by Alexander Fleming and was introduced to the world in 1928. Observing a petri dish with a strange mould, the scientist observed that every bacteria surrounding that mould lay dead and undivided. This mould would soon become the legendary penicillin still used for a number of bacterial infections. Indeed, the story of penicillin marks only the beginning of modern medical sciences. It was also one of the first commercially produced medications for fighting a wide range of bacteria. The drug would help thousands of soldiers deployed on the fields of World War II and would continue to exist as one of the most sought-after antibacterial drugs used for young children and adults.